Hey everyone, in this video I'll show you how to add jumping code to your player class in your platformer game. Now to do this, um, jumping actually relies on falling, so make sure that your player can fall and stop when they hit the ground. So make sure you have falling implemented before you start to add um, this jumping code. All the code's going to be in our player class, and basically what we're going to do here is just quickly review that v speed is keeping track of how how fast our player is moving vertically and so falling uses v speed it's a positive number when players are falling down so we're actually going to use v speed as a negative number when we want our player to move up or we want him to jump so to create jumping what we want to do is create a public boolean called jumping and this is actually going to be um, just a boolean that keeps track of is our player jumping or not it's either going to be true or it's going to be false the other thing that we want to add is a public integer called jump strength and this is going to basically tell the computer how high our player can jump now when we type in a number like 20 and that's what i'm going to use in this video that doesn't mean he can jump 20 pixels. It's part of the math formula that helps him jump up is 20. So the higher the number, the higher he's going to jump. The smaller the number, the, the less height your character is going to like travel when they jump. Now, when we created this player class, we've created a lot of methods, and we've kind of tried to keep our code organized with that. So let's do that for jumping. Let's create. A method called jump so public void jump and then let's put some curly braces here so that we can put our code in here now to make our player jump we're gonna use V speed for that so we're gonna say that if we're jumping the players vertical speed is going to equal his vertical speed minus the jump strength and so what this means is basically if he's not moving his vertical speed is going to become zero minus the jump strength so minus 20 that's going to make our player move up 20 when he jumps now after he jumps or after we change his vertical speed what we want to do is we want to tell the computer that he's jumping so let's make that boolean called jumping equal true and then, if you think about it, after a player jumps up, they need to fall back down to the ground. So we're going to call fall in this method. When he jumps, he's gonna go up, he's gonna be jumping, and then he is going to be falling. Now, because we told the computer to keep track of whether or not the character is jumping, we need to actually keep track of whether he's jumping in a couple other places. So when we move our actor to the ground or when we pop him back on the ground after he lands, we want to tell the computer that he's not jumping anymore. So in our move to ground method, we need to add jumping equals false right here. Okay. Now, as we scroll up here, if he's not touching the ground, he is not allowed to jump, which doesn't really make sense right now. But like if he's not touching the ground, he's not allowed to jump. So if he's not touching the ground in our on ground method, we really need to say he is jumping like that. And basically what that's going to prevent is him jumping in mid air. Okay. And again, if he's falling, he's not allowed to jump. So in our falling method, let's say that jumping equals true right here. And now as we scroll up, we have everything we need except for a way to tell our character that he is jumping. And so um, right here, I'm gonna add a method called public void, let's call it check keys. This is going to check the keyboard to see if we are doing anything. So in this method, this is where we're going to put our keyboard control. 
Um, so we're just going to use some basic keyboard control here. We're going to say if, and then greenfoot dot is key down. And you can use any key you want here. I'm going to use the Z key. And then because we don't want him to jump, you know, constantly and while he's in the air and forever, let's use that Boolean that we have and jumping as a double check. So if he's not jumping, he's allowed to jump here. And when we press that down, let's put some curly braces here. Let's call that method called jump like this. And let's write a note to ourselves for later. Add the jumping sound here. So when you want your character to jump and make a little sound, this is where you should add that. Now check keys isn't in the act yet. So let's put that under check fall, check keys like this, and let's test this out. So if I press compile, our player should still fall down. We all want to make sure we don't break anything we've already added. And now when I press Z, he should jump up. And he does, and he jumps up and down. Now, I can't press Z while he's in the air and like double jump. All right, our code prevents that. Quickly, before the video is over, let's just check and see what happens when I change the jump strength to something bigger, like 40. Press compile, put our player on the screen, and now our player can jump a lot, like this. And if we change our jump strength down to like 10, he shouldn't be able to jump very much, or not very much, very high. He kind of just jumps a little bit. Now, if your player is, if his jumping is not behaving the way you think it should, or your player is flying when you're, when you press Z or whatever key you picked, one of the biggest culprits for that is this jumping Boolean, is to making sure that you have it in all the right spots. So if he's falling, put jumping equals true. If he's not on the ground, jumping should be equal true, all right? And then when he's moved back on top of the ground or moved to the ground, jumping should be false. And again, while you're jumping, jumping should equal true.